Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science. And in this workshop series, I'm going to show you how to formulate and make your own organic products. So let's get started. Now we have the organic booklet to go with this workshop course in your Dropbox if you've purchased the whole workshop series from us. So please turn to that now, section one. So let's take a look at what exactly is organic. What really is a certified organic product and how are the formulas we're going to create different to say other natural or so-called organic products out there? Well, if you ask a chemist what is organic, they're going to say to you any substance that contains carbon. If you ask a consumer what is organic, they're going to say uh, anything that contains natural and organic ingredients. But in reality, a truly organic cosmetic product should be certified and should meet certain certifying criteria. And that's what we're going to show you how to formulate products too. We're going to show you how to make certified organic products because there's a big difference between just adding some organic ingredients to your formulas and making a truly organic formula. We are going to be making truly certifiable organic formulas. Now some of the things you need to achieve a truly certified organic product is to have a minimum input of organic ingredients in every formula and we're going to do that. And I'm going to show you how to do this and explain it to you so that you know how to do this for other formulas as well. You must use only renewable sources of ingredients. It's going to surprise you as we go through this workshop series just how many products are labelled organic but really contain ingredients that can't be present in a truly certified organic product. And we're also going to show you how to take note of those, notice the difference and make sure you don't use them in your formulas so that you do have a truly organic product. You can only use specified preservatives to comply with organic certification rules. We're going to introduce you to one in these formulas that's going to be really reliable for your formulas. But you also learn how to find sources where you can choose other preservatives that would also be okay to use. You must avoid ingredients that have undergone certain processing and manufacturing steps. And you must avoid ingredients with a petrochemical origin. Now in the formulas we're going to create, you're going to be doing that. And the formulas that we have in this workshop series and the pack that goes with this workshop series also comply with all of these rules. And as we go through this workshop series, we're going to uh, let you know where you can go to source materials that also comply with these rules and avoid the ones that don't so that again, you can have truly certified organic products. We are going to be formulating to Cosmos organic standard. This is specific for cosmetic products and it also means that you can then get your products certified organic with Cosmos if you want to. So formulating organic products is not just swapping out some of the ingredients for organic choices. It's not just simply changing your avocado oil for organic avocado oil, for instance. It also means that you need to have a minimum organic percentage input in that formula. Uh, it also means that you can't use certain ingredients, especially certain types of preservatives, certain types of emulsifiers, surfactants and other ingredients. And it means that you really must use renewable sources for all of your ingredients in your formulas like your emulsifiers and your gums. So we're going to be talking you through how to know the difference as well. Now in this workshop series, I want to make it easy for you. So here's some key rules that we're going to be following. Leave on products like lotions, serums, creams and body butters must have a minimum of 20% organic ingredients. In the formulas that you're going to be making as part of this workshop series, they're over 60% organic ingredients. So there's a really high organic content for you. Wash off products like hand, face or body wash or leave on gels must have a minimum of 10% organic ingredients. And again, the formulas that you're going to be creating as part of this workshop series are a minimum of 30% organic ingredients. So we've got lots of organic goodness in the formulas you're going to create. 
Plant oils, extracts and essential oils that you want to include in organic formulas must be at least 95% organic. So a big tip to make formulating organic easier is to use organic sources of these materials only. Only ever use organic plant oils, extracts and essential oils and you'll find that this part of complying with the rules is then very easy to achieve. Be careful with the selection of your emulsifiers. These help make your creams and lotions. Be careful with your gelling agents, your gums. These get used in, in almost all of your personal care products. Your antioxidants, again, get used uh, across most of your formulation types. And your surfactants, which get used in your foaming, cleaning products. Use only those sources that are totally renewable with no synthetic inputs. And again, what we've got for you in this workshop program are totally renewable sources. Only certain preservatives can be used. We'll introduce you to a good preservative in this workshop series that not only works across all the formula types that you're going to be making in this workshop series, but is also useful in a variety of other formulation types. So it's a really good one for you to start getting used to using in your formulas. So now, one of the things that could really help with your learning is to find out what is this concept of natural anyway and just how many ingredients out there are saying they're natural and organic when maybe they're not. We've got this great YouTube video for you to watch here. It's totally free and you can watch that. And in that video, I explain more about natural and organic and I also go through common ingredients that are in a lot of cosmetic products that aren't actually as natural as manufacturers would suggest they are. So it's a great bit of watching and learning for you to introduce you to some of the ingredients that you might have thought were okay, but they're really not. Once you've had a look at that video, we're gonna talk you through general formulation techniques and equipment. So you can pause this video now and watch this free video on what is natural and then come back to this workshop. Now in a moment, I'm gonna actually show you how we put our organic formula together and then I'm gonna go into the lab and actually put the formula together and make a sample so that you're gonna see exactly what you will need to do to make your sample too. There's a couple of terms I just wanna get you familiar with. Reconstituted means to reform a substance. So you're gonna see us work with a concentrated aloe vera powder, and that's what's in your pack as well. Now we are gonna reconstitute this aloe vera powder to become its original aloe vera juice. Now this is important because we are gonna replace some of the water in our formulas to get a really high organic input using reconstituted aloe vera juice. Now you can't just purchase aloe vera juice because it might have other preservatives present that you can't use. So we use this concentrated powder and then we reconstitute it in water so that we can get a high organic input from a very easy to use material. So we're gonna reconstitute this aloe concentrate to become an aloe vera juice. We're gonna use humectants in all of our formulas. Now, humectants are an unsung hero on a lot of cosmetic formulations. Humectants help keep your skin moist. We're gonna be using organic glycerin. Now, one of the things that's great about a humectant is in moisturizers, it actually helps hold moisture in the skin so that the skin looks really supple and it feels really soft and moisturized. You don't get cracking of the skin and it helps smooth it out. It's a bit of an unsung hero in moisturizing products that way. In your foaming products, it actually helps enhance the foam. So it's got some other benefits in foaming products as well. We're gonna be using a gum. Now this helps gel water in cosmetics and it helps support the shelf life of a product so that you get a better shelf life out of the product because it helps stabilize it and helps make that product last for two or three years. The emulsifier that we mention in our formulas helps hold oil and water together. Normally, if you put oil and water in a bottle, they'll separate out into two big layers. But when we use an emulsifier, it will emulsify the oil and the water so we end up with a beautiful looking white cream. And you're gonna see us use emulsifiers to make the lotion and the body butter as part of this workshop series. 
Surfactants are the materials that help make those foam and bubbles and help clean the skin. So you're gonna see us use that in both the face wash and the body wash. And we're gonna use a couple of different types of surfactants. And when we get to the face wash and the body wash, I'm gonna explain why we do that. Preservatives help protect a product from microorganism growth and contamination. So this helps stop microorganisms and bacteria, uh, yeast and mold from growing in your formula over time. So it helps give you a good two or three year shelf life out of your product. We use antioxidants in the formula to help protect the formula from oxidation. Now this is really important because when a lot of people start formulating, they don't understand that there is a very big difference between antioxidants and preservatives. Preservatives protect against microorganisms. Antioxidants protect against oxidation. Antioxidants are actually a food source, so they'll actually feed bacteria, yeast and mold. They'll actually help enhance growth in your formula. So we need preservatives to protect against that. But antioxidants are important because if you don't use an antioxidant, but you have an organic plant oil or essential oil present, it will oxidize over time. It will cause your product to smell bad, uh, to have some color changes and can even cause big changes in pH and separation. This is not good for the quality of your product. So we use antioxidants to protect against oxidation, but they're not protecting against microorganisms. So that's why we use both in our formulas. You'll hear me mention about pH. This is a measure of acidity or alkalinity. Now, cosmetic formulas in general should have a pH around the skin's pH, which is around 5.5. And we use a range. We, we state a range in our formulas because you can't ever adjust a pH of a formula to exactly one pH. And it also changes a little bit over time. So you'll hear me mention pH, but in this workshop series, I have actually written into the formula exactly how much pH adjuster you need to make that product a nice skin friendly pH. And sometimes you need a different pH to around the 5.5 mark. And this might be because of some of the active ingredients you've selected or the preservative you've used, or it may be for another reason. And if you do more advanced studies with us, you'll learn a lot more about pH in later courses and also how to uh, adjust it in more detail. But right now for this workshop series, we've provided you with uh, directions on how much of the buffers, the pH buffers to use to adjust the pH. So you don't even have to worry about measuring it. We've done the measuring and the adjustment for you. So you will know exactly how much to add in each formula. Now, the other thing you'll notice is that we are using formulas, not recipes. Cosmetic chemists use formulas. We measure everything by weight. We don't go by volume. So if you've dabbled in formulating products in the past, you might have found you've written mil for some ingredients, grams for some ingredients, maybe ounces or fluid ounces. Uh, you might have written drops. Well, now we start working in 100% weight. And we do this because it makes it really simple to convert your batches from small 100 gram lab samples right through to 200 kilo batches that get manufactured by large scale manufacturers. As an example, when we're dealing with 100 grams and you're gonna see me make samples that are 100 grams in the lab, it's really easy to convert from percentage to grams. So 1% when I'm making a 100 gram sample is one gram. That's how easy it makes it. And then if I wanted to make 100 kilos, I simply multiply up to achieve my larger batch. So using percentages and weights helps us as chemists become very consistent and be able to measure everything perfectly, no matter the batch size, so that every batch works out exactly the same. So you're gonna see that difference in our formulas compared to other recipes you might have used or followed in the past. So now just a couple of final things before we get started, because in a moment, you're going to see me using the formula we're gonna be working with today.
So first of all, I want to make sure that you know how to read a formula. And we've got this great introductory beginner's cosmetic science video for you here, which will show you how to read a formula. And then you're going to see me go through the formula. So you'll be very comfortable with me using a formula if you watch this video first. Now, the formula that I use in this video isn't natural, but it's a nice simple formula and it shows you how we use a formula to create a sample and follow a formula to get the sample the same every single time. So please watch this video because it is all about how we read a formula to make a sample and a product. In this video, you will see me adjusting pH. Now, you don't have to worry about checking or adjusting pH in this workshop series. Again, we've done the calculations for you and we tell you what to do. But you do see how I adjust it in this video, which is useful information if you want to go on to making more products. This is a skill you will need to learn for yourself. So we have another video on how to measure and adjust pH here. Like I say, you don't need to watch this one just yet, but if you do want to go on to formulating and making more products, you will need to watch uh, this video so that you can understand how to measure and adjust pH for yourself in more formulas you'll develop later. And also, if you've got questions about what sort of equipment you will need, I've got a little list here of the equipment that you'll need to make the basic samples you see here, and even basic samples to get you started. Even if you're studying more advanced courses with us, you don't have to have full laboratory equipment. We've designed all of our courses so that if you don't have access to a lab, it won't matter. You'll still be able to make your formulas and prepare really good samples and of course, if you have access to lab equipment, well, that's great, but you don't need it to study with us. We've made sure that that's not a barrier to study. It's all about learning how to formulate, even with basic equipment to get you started. So we have uh, written information about that here. And of course, I have a video where I talk you through the types of equipment that you will use um, as both a beginner while you're studying if you don't have access to lab equipment and of course then if you want to then um, take the next step and create your own lab or if you start working uh, within a lab it also shows you more advanced equipment as well. But you only need the basic equipment to study with us both at this introductory workshop level right through to our advanced courses and this video will talk you through that. So now that we've gone through some of that background, we're ready to get making your organic products. So let's talk through the organic body lotion formula that you're going to be creating now. And then I'm going to show you how to put it together in the lab. Mm -hmm. 